Hello, this is Robert Rickover at Body Learning, and today my guest is Dushka Hatton, who is an Alexander Technique teacher in London, England. She's been teaching for about 15 years, uh, but we're going to talk today about her initial encounter with the Alexander Technique uh, before she ever became a teacher. Uh, Dushka, welcome to the show. Hi, Robert, and thank you so much for inviting me. Well, it's a pleasure to talk to you. We've been in touch by email and various web projects for the last little while. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> I wonder if you could, um, if we could begin by you just giving your very short description or definition of the Alexander Technique. Right. Well, I often say to people that um, the Alexander Technique quite simply says that the way that we use our body affects how it works, or to put it in another way, that use affects function. Um, and it's not a treatment um, as such, but really a series of lessons that enables you to explore how your body and mind work together. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, it's uh, been an instruction manual for life for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, that kind of leads us right into your uh, your your story. Um, you had you had uh, written a blog. Uh, I believe the title was something like "How the Alexander Technique Saved My Life." Is that is that correct? Yep. No, and, that's exactly it. And uh, it was a pretty compelling story. Uh, I wonder if you could kind of start at the beginning and proceed, and if there's anything uh, I, you know, I might jump in and and help clarify something if need be. Um, okay. But basically, I think the story kind of stands on its own. So, okay, well, I guess um, it started around. Uh, when I was in my mid-30s, um, I found myself, I was very happily married. I had uh, two beautiful young children. Uh, and I found that I was completely uh, depressed. I had no energy for life. I had no enthusiasm. I had no zest at all for life. Um, we were going through a pretty stressful situation in our, in our uh, work life. I work with my husband, who's an architect. Um, and we'd also just um, were in the process of building a house. So all in all, it was quite a stressful time. But I didn't recognize the symptoms of depression because, I, as I say, I was very happily married. I had two children. Uh, apart from a couple, you know, the external things, there was nothing really that I could see that was wrong with me. But I started losing a lot of weight. Uh, I, I couldn't sleep at all. Um, uh, and I think I even say in my blog that I was wandering around the house at sort of two and three o'clock in the morning, really uh, with thoughts racing through my head, not knowing what to do with it. Um, and this situation went on for, I suppose, a couple of years, really, um, obviously getting worse and worse. So um, it was a very difficult time for the family. Uh, so I set my uh, goals on, on, on trying to find out what was wrong with me. And uh, my first po point of call was my doctor. And he just said, well, uh, would you like to go on Prozac? And mm -hmm. I hadn't really heard of Prozac in those days. So I thought, okay, well, if this is going to help, yes, I'll go on Prozac. And it really didn't help at all. It was, it was horrible going on Prozac because it felt like I was shaking and I still couldn't sleep. Um, and it made the situation, uh, it seemed to me, a, a whole lot worse. So, so I then began this, this search to, to find out what on earth was wrong. Um, and I think I saw various diet, dietary people. I thought, maybe I have a food allergy. You know, we, we all have food allergies nowadays. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I had testing of various things. And, and, of course, they said, no, don't eat wheat, don't eat dairy, don't drink alcohol, don't drink coffee. So I stopped all those things. Nothing really much different. Um, I think I even saw a psych. I did see a psychotherapist. And we spent quite a lot of time drawing pictures, which looked like bits of pizza, as far as I can remember. So that wasn't much help. <laughs> <Right. laughs> that wasn't much help either. Right. Um, and eventually, after um, 
you know, quite a few months of, of trying this and trying that. A friend of mine suggested that I go see um, an Alexander teacher she'd been to. So I thought, well, hey, why not? I've, I've seen lots of other things. And I went to see her. And she was a remarkable woman. And in fact, I still go see her. I saw her yesterday, so I still go have lessons with her. And it took, I, I think, I felt, I don't know what I felt that for those first lessons. Um, it was very strange. It was um, very quiet. We didn't, she didn't do much talking. She just let me be. She, we did some chair work and then, uh, we lay on the table, or I lay on the table, obviously. Um, and she did what I now know to be, you know, the Alexander table work. And can, and, we, can we just pause for a second to please. explain to our listeners what chair work is? Uh, it's, I guess. it's kind of an Alexander technique teaching procedure where the student is sitting in a chair and and maybe at some point stands up or sits down, but... It's not really about learning how to stand up or sit down. It's just a, a framework for a teacher to to uh, work with a student's thinking and movement patterns, that kind of thing. Would that well, be I, a description that would match yours? I would say exactly that. We, we, we would look to see how we perform a familiar activity. Um, which, whether, which would be standing and sitting. Which in this case in this would case, be standing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and, ta- I, uh, and table work, which you also mentioned, is also another Alexander teaching procedure where the student is lying on a table, typically a massage table or a fairly firm surface, and in a particular configuration, uh, knees elevated uh, relative to your hips and some support under your head. It's kind of a it's it's a position that encourages release in and of itself, and it's a great framework within which a teacher can work to help a student release uh, tension. So it's uh, it's a procedure. It's a teaching procedure, basically. Exactly right. Exactly right. Um, so that's we. I had what I now know to be um, standard Alexander lessons, um, and I think I I continued these lessons for about. Um, I should think it was almost about six months before I realized that there was anything, before I realized the value of what was happening. Mm-hmm. I, I, mm-hmm. I would leave the lesson and I would, feel, I would feel lighter in myself. I would feel less like I had the cares of the world on my shoulders. Um, and this sensation would last for... Oh, I don't know, you know, a few days maybe. Well, a few days towards the end, but uh, I couldn't really understand what was happening. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was but only... you did know something was happening. Well, I think, I think this, is, this is it. What was interesting was that uh, my body knew. My body knew that it needed this. Something made me continue with these lessons. Right, right. Uh, it was as if someone had thrown me a lifeline, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it was, a, again, a chance remark to... I think it was my mother-in-law, in fact, who said, oh, you seem to be so much better. Um, and I said, well, yes, it's these Alexander lessons that um, are really helping me. And she looked at me and she said, well, why don't you train to be a teacher? And at that minute, it was as if I thought, me? I could do this? And, it w- and so started a magical period of my life, which was to train to be an Alexander Technique teacher. Um, Which we should you, say here is it's a three-year uh, process, yeah. <clears throat> pretty intense. Uh, very t- intense. Typically, uh, daily, uh, three yes. three hours or four hours a day. It is. It's kind of um, Alexander lessons on steroids, really. I mean, you're you're getting a lot of work yourself, and of course, you're learning how to teach, which really involves using yourself well and yes. developing some specialized skills. So it's a pretty intense process, uh, that th- three years of Alexander training. Yes, it, it's, it's an incredibly intense um, process, but it, it was, and I still look on it as a gift, mm-hmm. really as a gift, um, to be able to spend that time 
learning how to live, essentially. Um, and we learn how our minds and bodies work in the, in the most precise way. Um, and, I would and practical. And practical. Extremely and, practical. And, yeah. and this is the wonderful thing about this technique, is that um, I think almost unique in, in uh, any therapy or technique that I've come across, it manages to bridge both the our mental lives and our physical lives and also by necessity our emotional lives mm -hmm. it and i think that's what i meant by giving us a blueprint for living mm -hmm. in that um it it asks us how we perform very very well any task it could be simple it could be complicated mm -hmm. it asks us how we perform tasks and it shows us with very simple and very practical ways methods to use ourselves, our whole selves, in the most efficient way possible. Uh, so as I said, I, I, um, I used to skip off <laughs> to my Alexander classes every morning with um, just, it was a real sense of joy. I, I um, think back on my uh, training, which was about 30, over 30 years ah. ago, in London also, and I have to say it was one of the most exciting, interesting uh, three years of my life it was just an amazing experience to be able to every day go and and experiment with these ideas in a in a really supportive setting and constantly discovering new things about myself and about how to teach this work it's and, uh, well i i, yeah. I yes i can completely agree it was um I mean, we hear a lot nowadays about this uh, buzzword mindfulness, how we, how we can attend to ourselves and how, can we how we can attend to the moment. And for me, the Alexander Technique gives us very simple and very practical methods exact of doing exactly that. So right now, I'm aware of how I'm sitting. I'm aware that I'm talking to you. Well, obviously, I'm aware I'm talking to you, but and and most people would. But I know that my feet are on the ground. I know that my back is back. All of these things. So, in everyday life, it gives us tools to be able to um, use ourselves, as I say, to the maximum efficiency. Right. You know, you you, you develop a sensitivity to yourself that enables you to very quickly assess what's going on and to make uh, changes if you wish. I mean, it gives th you that freedom to, ch to change your current situation. I think that's exactly right. Um, it gives us complete freedom to do that. And the, the magical thing is, is that it, it's, it, it works on every single level. Um, mm -hmm. Again, which I find um, uh, very exciting about this technique in that, I don't know about you, but I sometimes feel myself um, slipping into very similar thought processes or emotional patterning about something. You know, uh, someone says some particular phrase and you think and you feel yourself say, oh, hang on, I don't like this or uh, whatever. And you fall into a pattern of, of, um, of habit in, in, in your expressions, in your thoughts, in your emotions. Mm -hmm. and, and the technique... Yeah, the technique can help you be aware of exactly what those habits are and Indeed. at a physical level, if nothing else, and how to uh how to shift them. Exactly right. Yeah. You exactly. in in your blog, I just want to read a sentence from your blog oh. which is a quote from a a book that I'm not actually familiar with, uh Job's Body, I believe. Oh, uh, yes. Uh Dean Yuhan, is that the author? Well, I think, I think it is. I think, uh, he's an American uh, yeah. writer, so I think it's Juhan, yes. Juhan, I perhaps. Don't anyway, this quote is, I think, a very interesting one. He says, there are no sensations or, emo or emotion that is not translated into a muscular response of some kind. And there, he goes on from there. But I think that's a key point and something that when you when you have some experience with the alexander technique you really get that it's impossible really to have a, a thought of any kind without there being uh, a, a muscular correlate 
I completely agree. And that, and, I, and that is, I think that's kind of shocking for some people to hear who, who haven't mm-hmm. had the experience. I mean, I think a lot of people tend to think, well, you, there's thoughts and then there's actions. But one of the things you discover with the Alexander Technique is it's really impossible to, to, to separate them. And actually, Alexander himself, the guy who developed this work, 100 20 odd years ago now I guess um, he he was confronted with this fact from his own experience he didn't come into his project uh, thinking that ahead of time but he was sort of forced to that conclusion that mind and body are really just two sides of the same coin they're, they're absolutely interrelated um, and this was at a time when the idea of mind body unity was pretty <laughs> was definitely not out there all that much in the west but yes. one does um discover that fairly quickly when when you start taking alexander lessons that it just you cannot separate the two well i th- i think that's that's exactly right and um uh, well as as you know and and all of us teachers know alexander described um humans as a psychophysical organism mm-hmm. um and that's exactly right we we th- there is no emotion that isn't translated physically um and i'm often asking my students to uh to for example the emotion of excitement is very similar to the emotion of of dread but it's simply it's simply the the mind that um, translates those same symptoms into either something positive or something negative. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and it's, I think that's why in my blog I I suggest that people think of something um, annoying or irritating and um, and then notice their physical reactions to it, and and perhaps then think of the think of something that makes them feel happy or mm-hmm. that they're. And if you start noticing your physical reactions, you start seeing, you start proving more and more Alexander's initial discoveries on this point. Exactly. And um, just to get back to your original reason for taking lessons after after the, your lessons and three years of Alexander technique training, what uh, what happened to the the those initial symptoms? Oh yes, well. I discovered um, that that actually a lot of the symptoms were what I was doing to myself, mm-hmm. um, uh, rather like Alexander's discovery. I discovered that I was um, tightening my neck to a, to a very, very great degree, mm-hmm. um, constricting my breathing um, and collapsing in my upper torso. Um, in short, all of the um, uh, the very familiar postures or positions that I, I guess a lot of us see with with depressed patients, perhaps, or mm-hmm. depressed pupils. Um, and I think the, the revelation for me, for the Alexander Technique, was that it's not going to do anything about external problems, and nothing can, but it gives you such great tools to be able to look at how you are dealing with your problems, how you are dealing with external stimulus. Mm-hmm. Or even internal internal stimuli. Um, you know, and it's it, not for nothing that depression is called depression. Uh, quite. <laughs> it, it is uh, literally uh, most people who are. De- I mean, if you look at someone and you think, "Boy, they look depressed." What is it that you see? You typically see a kind of a an inward pull. Um, often manifesting as kind of a slumpy posture. Yeah. You know, I mean, it could be to take different forms, but it, it depression is pulling into yourself, well, physically it, it, pulling it, into yourself. Exactly. Yeah. And pull, pulling in and pulling down and, and uh, well, each one of us has different habits, but yes, exactly right. And... We we can all recognize that as such, and we only have to look at um, our actors to see if they're em- if they're trying to portray a depressed person. That's what they'll do. The, mm-hmm. the, the, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I, I, it was exciting to discover that we don't have to necessarily deal with mental issues on a mental plane. We can simply ask a shoulder to release, and just by doing that, we find ourselves in a different situation. 
Mm -hmm. So I think it might be uh, important here to just emphasize that um, the Alexander Technique is not a therapy per se. It is a a teaching method. But of course, uh, if you're releasing uh, inward and downward pulls, that can have some restrictions. That can have some... uh, some really useful therapeutic spin-offs, but I think it's important that we be clear that we are not therapists and we don't well, diagnose disease or any of that sort of thing. No, we really don't do that. Um, but what we do do, which is I think one of the most uh, useful things that we can do for somebody, is that we give our pupils tools that they can start taking um, control and responsibility over their own lives. Um, and to use another sort of uh, fashionable buzzword, I would say that it's very empowering. And again, very I think, empowering. Yes, but, it gives you a it, choice. It gives you a choice where you really didn't have one before exactly. because you didn't actually realize what the situation was that you exactly would right. want to choose to change. You, I mean, you knew obviously you realized uh, that you were. Uh, quote depressed, but at some point, but you didn't really, I'm guessing, see exactly how that played out in your in your body. I had no idea at all. I had absolutely no idea. This this the idea of me doing uh, some form of body work couldn't have been further from my mind, really, yeah. or my back background or anything. Yeah. So, and. I think, as I say in my blog, and but I often say that learning the Alexander Technique was, for me, like learning to see in color. It was, after having seen in black and white the rest of my life, it simply gave me a completely new set of sensations, a new sensitivity, um, and a new way of, of living, really, on a day-to-day level. It was very exciting. It well, still is, actually. It, yeah, it is. <laughs> Oh, the, that your experience of not uh, knowing concretely what was going on in yourself before having lessons mir- mirrors my own pretty precisely. I had absolutely no body awareness at all, and right. uh, it was quite a shock to me when someone once said, "Oh, your 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 chest is pretty tight," and I remember yeah. thinking, "What does that mean?" It seemed fine yeah. to me. Anyway, um, is it where is there anything else you want to mention before we uh, before we come to uh, an end here? No, I think that we've really just about covered it. Um, I, I think that's about it. I, I'm. I, yeah. I actually would like to end with uh, you had mentioned just a little while ago that. It, it, uh, taking lessons was like seeing in color after yeah. seeing in black and white your, earlier. And I'd yeah. like to just read uh, very quickly what you wrote right after that, because I think it's a, a really interesting point and okay. might be a nice place to end. You, you write, there is no right position or posture. There is simply a condition of simplicity and freedom. It, the Alexand- uh, it demands your attention. It is so simple that it can be explained to a child. And yet, after 20 years of immersion, I am still learning and discovering. I think that's yeah. a nice place to, to end our conversation. Um, my guest today has been uh, Dushka uh, Hatton, who is uh, an Alexander Technique teacher in London, England. Uh, if anything that we've talked about today intrigues you and you live in London or that area, we'll put a link to her website by the interview. And if you live anywhere else in the world, we'll put a link to a site that will give you more information about the Alexander Technique and enable you to find a teacher in your area. Uh, Dushka, thank you so much for being on the show. Well, thank you very much, Robert. I very much enjoyed it.